So of course we all know what has been happening with Godot lastly and as a result you may want to start exploring other engines. This could be anything from Unreal to Unity to Game Maker to literally any other. But well, today I'm going to be using Unity as it is other engine that I have a wide experience on. And I'm going to be focusing on explaining it uh, using the Godot editor literally um, at the same time to demonstrate how things can be created also in Unity. So that if you want to actually switch from Godot to Unity, you can make this change a little bit smoother. So to do this, we are going to be creating a super simple prototype step by step and uh, this prototype will basically be a user interface um, with a button okay that when we press it our score is going to go up so in godot how you would start this off probably is by just creating brand new scene with a control node okay i will uh, for example name this node main exactly like this and then i will just with control s save this scene uh, as this is a pretty um small project i am not going to be organizing folders or anything like that um, so i'm going to be just saving everything in my root uh, folder and then here in unity uh, you already have a, a scene that has been created for you and for user interfaces what probably you're going to be using um, is a canvas okay so you are going to right click ui canvas okay now, of course, in Godot, you also have the canvas layer node, okay? Um, but, well, they are quite different because the canvas layer, the, the only main thing that it does is just showing what is inside of this node on top of everything else. And in Unity, the canvas actually has more stuff, okay, in terms of scaling, positioning, etc. And also, the canvas allows you to uh, anchor your nodes properly. For example, if here on your control node, you add, let's say, a button. Well, as it is inside of a control node, this allows you to put it wherever you want. And the canvas is the exact same thing. Um, also, if you just want to add here uh, anything that has to do with UIs, for example, go here to UI, and I will just add a text, it will be automatically put inside of a canvas, okay? Because a text cannot be put uh, alone without a canvas. So what I'm going to be doing over here is to just go ahead and create this new canvas. And by the way, when I created it, you may realize that I also have this event system. This will basically allow us to detect different inputs. For example, if we press a button and we don't have an event system, you need to won't detect that there has been a click. Okay, so this, no, uh, this uh, game object is super important that you just keep it over there. And now, well, we don't actually see our canvas, so we have to double click it. And well, here we actually see our canvas. And here's something quite important is that you have the canvas scaler. So if you have it in constant pixel size, uh, your UI is not going to actually be able to adapt to different screen resolutions. So usually the option that you are going to be using is scale with screen size. And here for the reference resolution, for example, we're going to be providing 120 by uh, 1080. Okay, so this is the standard uh, six, uh, 16 by um 16 by 9, okay? Aspect ratio, okay? So now in uh, Godot, uh, if we want to add a text, we would add the label node over here. And I'm going to put in the text just score 0. Uh, I will put it on the center top. And then I will just uh, put it in the center, both horizontally and vertically. And I will go to the theme over right. And I will make it much uh, bigger something like 75 maybe and then using the move tool i will move it a little bit okay now in unity uh i will uh, right click on the canvas ui legacy and text you will also see this text mesh pro that basically provides more options okay uh but well just to keep everything simple i will use the standard text that is going to be more than enough and here once again in the text i'm going to put score zero okay it is here, but well, the, the color and everything, I'm going to be changing it over here. I will then center it exactly like this. And now what I will do is that I will just make this box much bigger. I will make this much bigger as well. I will actually make it 75, okay? 
to have uh, the same sizes in both. And then here, as it happens with Goat, you also have the Anchors preset. Um, so here you can also change the pivot um, and the anchors, okay? So I will just uh, hold down the Alt. So this will allow me to also set the position. So I will move it to the center top. Okay, and once again, using here the Move tool that is over here, I will just move it down a little bit, okay? And there we have our interfaces. Now, also something that you may have noticed is that, for example, um, is how the hierarchy system works in both. So in Unity, we have game objects, okay? And on top of these game objects, we have components. So if we actually, I'm going to collapse these components. So for example, we have in this case, as this is a UI node, this has a rect transform that is quite similar to a transform in Godot, but well, that basically it provides the anchors um, and more things. Uh, then the canvas renderer, because it is inside the canvas. And then we have the text element, the text component, actually. Um, but, well, in Godot, you just have a node that specifically performs this action. Or, for example, to give another quick example, in order to create a character, you may use the character body node, and here you may add as different nodes a collision and a sprite. But in Unity, you may create a new game object, I will call it player, and on top of here, for example, you will add as component a reshoot body 2D, a box collider, and a sprite a renderer okay so you have everything in the same place so this is other uh, other difference that you have to know now in order to add the button the process is going to be slightly similar so i'm going to right click on the canvas ui legacy button once again we do have the button with text mesh pro but well let's just keep things simple and i will press enter and this button this time has Two game objects inside of it it has the actual button okay with for example the image and the um, button itself um and then also it has the text okay separated from the actual button okay so this was like the way of organizing your scene how different they are because in godot what we have let me just uh, go back to the main scene if we add up a button we just have the button and we have the text inside of the uh, button node um, so I will just um, put here plus one, okay, and I will make this a little bit bigger, maybe something like this, and then I will go to the font sizes and uh, increment in load, maybe to something like 50. Then using the anchors, I will center it. And to make this exact same thing in Unity, I will give here a font size of 50. Once again, I will put the exact same text. I will have to make the button now uh, much bigger. So um, I will use, for example, here the width and height properties. So uh, let me make it a little bit wider and taller. Maybe something like this. And you can actually use in here the rec tool, just uh, modify it here like manually if you want it. Um, so there we have it. And now let's actually create the functionality. So I will add here a brand new script. And if I want to detect when this button is being pressed, I will just go to the node here, hide my button selected, the pressed signal, and I would connect it to the main node. And first of all, I will need a variable that will have my score. So I will just use their static typing, but this is not really necessary. You could type it just like that. And on button pressed, I will increment my current score. And then I will update my label.txt to be score. But I also have to convert this into a string. So for that, we use the str function. So there we have it. But let me just add here the score text. Okay, exactly like this. So now this should be working as expected okay now in unity uh, we could add uh, a brand new script to this object over here but maybe here for you to also understand this uh, you may have here what is called a game manager and uh, here i will create a new c sharp script okay just in my assets that i will call game manager 
and I will then assign this game manager script to this game manager object. And by the way, here you can, I can, for example, assign this script to this game manager object. I can assign it to this button if I wanted to, for example, uh, to this main camera, to literally whatever. Um, so that's also something that you have to take uh, into account. So I can open this up. In this case, I already have the integration with um, Visual Studio Code. That is something super simple. But well, in Godot, you have everything in the same place, which could be a little bit simpler, um, even more for beginners. But well, um, it is not super complicated to set up everything. But well, yes, the first time that you open up a script in Unity, it may be a little bit too complicated. So if you don't know this, these are called namespaces. They basically import some stuff that we're going to be using, for example, Unity Engine. So this will allow us to use keywords and stuff from Unity. And then system.collections and system.collection.generics uh, are then uh, are also other uh, namespaces that will allow us to do more stuff directly related to Unity. And in some, uh, in some cases, if you do not have these namespaces, uh, you will have an error of uh, of different things, okay? So it's always a good thing to have them over there. The start function will will be, will be the same thing as the ready function of Godot, and the update is the same thing as process delta, okay? And in uh, Unity, you also have the uh, awake function that is called before start, okay? Just for you to know uh, that. I will uh, delete this. And by the way, well, here also you have a uh, classes, okay, by default with the name of the script, and you have what is here a mono behavior, okay? These are the kinds of scripts that are completely attached to some kinds of a game object, okay? Of course, I am simplifying explanations a lot because we don't have that much time, but well, this is just a, a basis for you to know. So uh, in this case, to connect, let's say, a signal to our onClick uh, event, well, actually, I, I spoiled you everything. Um, because here in Unity, we don't have such thing as, as signals. We have here what is called onClick event. So uh, for this in order to work, what we have to do is to create a public function, okay? And uh, then we have to provide here which is the uh, type of data that this function will return. In this case, it is going to be returning void, basically nothing. This is the same as in Godot. And then the number, uh, the, sorry, the name of the function. So for example, on button click. Note how also here the syntax is different using these symbols. And also how the naming is usually with Pascal case instead of, for example, uh, being named uh, with uh, lower cases, okay? And here when our button is click, I will also need to declare the same variable. And in this case, you have both public and private variables. Public variables can be accessed in any script, in any class, and private variables can only be accessed within this class. So this is a variable that in this case, I will just make it private. I only want it to be able to be read and set in this exact same script. Then the type is going to be an integer, and here I will name it score, okay? And you always have to use a semicolon at the end of every statement. So when our button is clicked, I will increase my score by one and I will also need a reference to the text. Okay. So I will use a serialized field. This will basically allow me to set it in the, in the inspector. This will be the equivalent to export. And I will make this private again because I don't want it to make it public. I don't want to access it in any other place. This has to be of type text and this will automatically add a new, new a new namespace unity dot UI to allow me to actually build references to UI game objects and I will just call it a uh, text. Actually, I will call it just score text. And then after doing this, I will set the score text dot text to be um, <clears throat> score plus score. Okay, and in this case, instead of using the str function, you would use the dot to string function. Now we come back here and well, we had to wait there a couple of seconds. And here in the game manager, I will have to drag and drop this text over there. And then in the button, I will press here on the add to the list. I will drag and drop the game manager. And over here in the functions in the game manager, I will have to find on button click, okay? 
So this will be the same as connecting the signal uh, but in Unity. So we'll now click uh, play. And well, actually, the text that I have to update is this one, not the text from the button. So now let's check this out. And there we have the exact same functionality. Furthermore, if you want to change the background color in Unity, you will go to the main camera background. And well, here, for example, we can make this some kind of gray so that it is even more similar to Godot. Of course, this is just a super quick introduction to Unity for Godot developers, but well, I think that it, it is still worth it to at least compare the, the most general things such as how a scene is a structure, these uh, naming conventions, how functions are created, how variables are declared, uh, this difference in the signals and events in Unity, etc. So well, I hope that this guide uh, has at least has at least helped you a little bit and if it has um, please let me know in the comments down below and subscribe for more similar content i will see you in the next one and bye bye